Welcome back to another live episode of the Relevant Recruiter Show. I've got a repeat offender today, a repeat guest, my friend, Ben Bonnell. Ben owns two companies, Snelling Staffing of Houston, as well as Morgan Benjamin Search, uh, both focused on industrial and oil and gas space. And Ben will tell you about a story. Ben's kind enough to actually share some of the good, bad, and the ugly of owning and growing a business. And he's going to share today about how he was in some massive debt and how he's been able to turn that around into two thriving businesses. So Ben, thanks again for taking the time to hang with me. Thanks for having me, man. Excited to be on here and, uh, you know, show my underwear to the world. There you go. There you go. So, uh, you know, I know I just kind of mentioned it, but you guys are in, in Houston, Texas. You've got a beautiful family out there, correct? Yes, we are. It's uh, sunny and very hot in uh, summer in Texas. Nice and humid, huh? <laughs> yeah, just just a little bit. Yep, right on, man. Well, let's dive right into this whole thing. Let's get into the good stuff. So, Ben, give us a little bit of like a background history. Like, how did you get into the staffing and recruiting industry? Well, I always knew growing up when I went to college that I wanted to get into recruit. I'm just, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have a degree that's irrelevant for what I do, but. Uh, I, I started looking for a job. Uh, I was in Houston, had been relocated down here by a, a company that I worked for straight out of college. And I, it was like, I think one of the first and only jobs I interviewed for, I really hit it off with the, the woman who ended up hiring me, who is the previous owner and founder of uh, our staffing business and one of my mentors. And she made an offer. I accepted it. And that was it. I didn't, I didn't know anything about recruiting or staffing. Um, so I think like so many people in our industry, you kind of get into it uh, almost on accident. Right. Um, it was a fortunate accident. Yeah. Is there even a degree? There's not even a degree, huh? Now that you bring that up, there's nobody's. You know, <laughs> you can get like some kind of focus in HR, I'm sure, but no, right. I don't think there's any degree. Uh, right. Not that I'm aware of. So, what was kind of the biggest, you know, like when you got into staffing, what was the, or in the recruiting spot, like what was the biggest surprise to you? Have you ever seen that show on Discovery Channel? I think it's called How It's Made, or maybe it's on the Science Channel or History or something like that. I know of the show, but I don't think I've watched much of it now. So it's always like they take you on a tour of how something's done. So it's a factory that makes baseballs or makes uh, bicycles or, you know, forms the metal in these cups or, you know, it's always some some random object from your, you know, your daily life that you don't think about how it's actually made and how it actually gets, you know, to you as the consumer. And they then tour these factories that that literally felt like my introduction to recruiting because we were we were in a growth mode when I was hired and we were always going out and touring new, new facilities. And so you got to just see all these different processes and machinery. And it, it seemed like every week there was a new job that I was like, I, I didn't even know that was a job like I didn't even know someone did that. So it was a I had no exposure to to industrial you know, not manufacturing, not transportation, nothing. So it was a, it was a, a, a serious education um, on skilled trades and um, where, where I kind of came up, everybody went straight to college and, and skilled trades weren't really a thing. So uh, it was, it was, it was neat. It, I really enjoyed it. And that that's probably early on why, why I was like really engaged and, um, and, and stuck around during those crazy early years. Cause I mean, the, our, the, my first few years in the business were wild, man. We were growing at crazy percentages. Right. And you were a part of that growth and that actually helped elevate you. You kept on growing within the company, you know, personally too, correct? I did. Yeah. Every year or so, um, they were, they'd give me a, a little bit more responsibility, whether I was, you know, ready or prepared for it or not. It's probably another conversation, but uh, yeah, I had two mentors that um, really had their thumb on me and um, I was real fortunate in that sense. Yeah. I, I got to benefit from that growth um, uh, professionally uh, and, and personally, really. Right. You know, I know a lot of what we're going to talk about is the people in your life. I mean, let's start with them. I mean, what kind of impact did they have on you in terms of mentorship, not only from staffing, recruiting, but just business in general? Uh, and it's not even just business in general. They were the people I was with and underneath every single day at work when I was uh, just, those are pivotal years, right? Your early right. and mid twenties. Like that was when I met my, you know, a girlfriend who became my fiance, he became my wife who were still married and have kids today. And so all the advice and all the, the mentorship that in the moment you, you know, are, are probably as a kid in your twenties, not necessarily aware of, um, uh, I, I, I benefited in ways I can't even articulate from, uh, from those two, um, on the business side, as well as the personal side. And then, you know, the biggest kind of farewell gift, and you and I've talked about this is, you know, when they wanted to sell the business to retire, you know, I was in my, I guess, late twenties at that point. And, 
you know, as a normal kid in his late twenties, didn't have the financial resources to buy. And they, they actually financed that for us. Um, after I went through the process of, you know, being told by every bank that we asked, you know, th thanks, but no thanks and good luck. So right. I, I couldn't even articulate it. You know, everything right. I've uh, benefited from them. Now that kind of brings us up to speed. So you were about 28 when you, you know, exactly. had the opportunity, you ended up taking the leap to purchase this um, business. What kind of conversations were you having with your wife at that point in time? I mean, two, you know, 20 year olds talking about a million dollar plus loan and, and things like that. Well, the loan was a little less than that, but we ended up in total being, yeah, uh, it was real close to a million in debt. Uh, oh man, we still have the the dining room table that those conversations were had around. Is is in a different house. We've since moved, but like we hold on for whatever reason to that old table just because of the sentimental value of all the conversations that were had around it. Um, because I, I grew up in a family of small businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think I always kind of at some point knew like I, I didn't necessarily know how that would be my path, but I kind of always thought it, it would be. Um, and, and my wife grew up in the opposite. Her, uh, her father worked in the automotive industry, you know, and that, that was a different generation too, where you got a job, worked for the same company for your career. Um, and her mother uh, was the same way, uh, worked for a, a certain CPA firm for a really long time. And so we just, we were raised in real different households. Right. Um, so I, I got the advice speaking of, of what I benefited from those mentors. It was actually, uh, uh, Beverly, my, my former boss who had said, like, you gotta let, you gotta let her come to this conclusion on her own. Don't, don't force it or don't try to, you know, and, and, and I don't know as a kid in my twenties that I would have taken that approach. I really wanted it. And right. I left to my own demise, probably would have done everything I could to, you know, try to get my wife to agree to do it with me and, uh, took the approach and the advice that I was given. And, um, one day it just happened. She was like, I'm all in, let's do it. And, and we went from there. Nice. Nice. So you took on a pretty, a pretty hefty loan to get yeah. started. Um, we'll come back to that, but you know, outside of that, like now you're 28, you're running and owning a business that's, you know, fairly <laughs> successful already, you know, what were some of the stress, you know, stresses and, you know, stresses and pressures you were feeling at that point in time? Outside you of know, that? It was the first time I had ever not had a boss, you know, and that right. that's, that's a whole new adventure for someone who's, you know, roughly, you know, eight, seven, six, seven, eight years into their career. Um, and, and at first there was the excitement around it. And then there was the realization of like, Hey, this is your ship out at sea. And, and although there were many times it felt kind of rudderless and like I was on it by myself. Um, I think there was probably some, some, uh, you know, that was purposeful. They didn't get real involved. They didn't ask a lot of questions in the first year or so they, you know, if I wanted to talk to them or give an update or ask questions, they were always available, but they, they kind of let me, let me go and figure it out for myself. And, you know, I, I've, I've told you in the past, I used to do these really long, like 70 mile triathlons. I think that was part of dealing with the anxiety, right. It was like right. trying to find an outlet, you know, to, to either squash it or deal with it. I mean, um, and that's just in the day-to-day -day running of the business that has nothing to do with the financial aspect of it. Right. Right. What about, you know, like you just mentioned that you first time didn't have a boss. And now you're also probably the first time where you, where you were the boss. I mean, what were some of the challenges you were going through with, you know, managing the team and motivating the team and, and, and being, you know, stepping into the leadership role? Nothing like what it could have been. I was already in a, a leadership role at the time, um, but my coworkers, and there's still one today here, uh, the, the girl that I actually trained me when I got hired, um, who's been here for 12 plus years. Um, they made it easy. Like we were a team. Um, th there wasn't a lot of like pushback. There wasn't, um, nobody left or anything like that. Like I, I was super, super fortunate, um, that people stuck around, um, and made it easy because it could have been really difficult. I mean, if they didn't have faith that I could at least do a halfway decent job, I'm sure they were all, you know, they, they could easily have left and gone and gotten other jobs. Uh, but they stuck around and made it that made that transition super easy for me. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So you also at that point in time, it was just snelling staffing, though, correct? It was. Yeah, we were primarily doing light industrial staffing, right. um, traditional uh, LI model. We're probably about 80 percent of our business was light industrial hourly and about 20 percent was, <clears throat> was administrative, you know, clerical in the office. Got it. Yeah. And then you guys faced some pretty good challenges that were kind of external, no control, 
one of those I think you mentioned was uh, the hurricane was kind of the first major challenge that <laughs> you got thrown your way. Tell us about yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, eight or, eight or nine months into uh, year one, Hurricane Harvey flooded the office as well as, I mean, we weren't unique in that, right? I mean, yep. Houston got hit really hard, the whole metro area and, and uh, um, office flooded. Uh, and, and that was like another example of our team. Like we worked in awful condition. Like they had to come in and rip the walls out and remediate. And um, like everybody stuck around and just like made it happen. Like there was a point in time, I think that I was at a card table in a warehouse, like, and everybody just like, they just made it happen. Like it was, it was terrifying in the moment without having the experience of being through one. Cause I'm not from, I'm not from an area. I'm from Northeast Ohio. So like we don't get hurricanes. Right. Um, it, and so terrifying in the lead up. But then I guess the great thing about a hurricane, unlike a pandemic, is a hurricane comes and it leaves, right? You have right. aftermath, but, you know, the city of Houston hit hit go again pretty quickly. So very terrifying in the moment, but in hindsight, it was like, I mean, it, it was a, a week or so where things were really bad. And then like, we all got back to work. Nice. And then year two, you're an industrial, you're an oil and gas. There was another, <laughs> there was another big change that happened. What, what was that one? Yeah. Yeah. Oil went from, I think, 78, 79, maybe $80 a barrel, good price, uh, down to roughly 40, 42, something like that. So that has a major impact on a lot of the companies um, at the time that, that we were um, working with. So we saw a pretty significant dip in our business um, and had to had to think real hard and long about you know what we were going to do and what type of business we were going to pursue and how we would uh, start to diversify to you know protect ourselves from uh, and again, that that's not a unique story either. I mean, that's oil and gas. That's right. oil and gas has been like that forever. That's um, just kind of the way it is. When it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's real bad. Right. Uh, not a lot of in between. Um, so yeah, that was yeah, that was been year two. Right. Did that. And you guys weren't even up with the search business by then, right? That you were just still trying to float this, this staffing business at that time, right? We weren't. We we had already started to go after more direct hire, perm, search, everybody calls it something different. Um, right. We had already started to go after more of that business. So our our business mix was shifting. And that was kind of the year 2018 that um, our, the business really did start to flip uh, more in that direction where that was where the majority of our growth was um, and why we were able to weather, you know, what was going on in the oil industry because of that. And then in 2019 is when we actually it, it was doing enough business on its own that we we started to separate the two and and, and rebrand it and um, kind of open that second business running parallel. So we share some customers, but for the most part, they're they're pretty separate. Nice, nice. And then what happened in twenty twenty? I forgot. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. A pandemic came in in March, and we're like, ah, by May things will be back to normal, right? Yep, yep, yep. So shoot, man, that's the first four years. You've had four. Uh, you know, you got a market dip in your specific industry. You've got you've got a, a hurricane in the local market. You know, growing a business and then a pandemic. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. In hindsight, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy that we got through it and we've got through it without you know, you know, we've made money every year. Some years more than others. We've never had to lay people off. We've never um, we, we've been fortunate, man. We've goes back to what we've talked about, like just having the right people in the right seats, having the right people around you and on your team. Um, like when you talk about the pandemic, like when you and I met and started working together, I think it was March or April last year when we finally realized like, hey, this pandemic thing is going to be real and it's going to last a while, you know, and how that impacted our business and our ability to, to develop new business and survive. It just looking back at all of it, like I can vividly remember conversations with different individuals on our team here or when I think last year and what you and I started doing together, like there's, there's just, there's always a conversation or a person I can associate other and it's almost never me. It's someone else that I can associate like, Oh, that's, that was the beginning of how we got through that. Like right. that, that's why I'm pa so passionate about what we do and working with other entrepreneurs and businesses and, and finding them the people that they need, because I've been the beneficiary over and over and over, like every year of big problem arises, someone on the team has the idea or the solution to get us through it. And, right. and that that's what drives us. I mean, that's why we're in this business. Right. You know, and through all that, I think the big story, those on the outside that are listening, you know, a big part of this is all the challenges that have overcome is you're still carrying that business loan that now here we are, you're able to pay off in a soon, you know, time frame that was sooner than what you're, what you're expecting. But yeah, 
Yeah, we're gonna pay it off early. Old, 29 years old, 30 years old, I don't care how old you are, carrying that kind of a you know a, a debt. I mean, how are you dealing with that? Oh man, there's a line from a movie or not a movie from a book that I always steal by Ben Horowitz called the I think it's the hard thing about hard things. And like that book was, he, his voice was in my head in that first year because it's a book about being an entrepreneur and just all the, all the stuff you deal with that, you know, a lot of people don't talk about, you know, and the, the line is something like I used to wake up in the middle of the night, you know, at 2 a.m. sweating with my heart racing, staring at the ceiling, wondering why the hell I'm up at two in the morning, sweating, staring at the ceiling, like stuff like that. And like those triathlons I used to do and like punishing your body and like just dealing with anxiety that's brand new that you have no idea how to deal with. And also being in like a position, like, especially in the first few years, I wasn't comfortable talking about like those vulnerabilities. Like right. there was no one around me that was talking about it, even though I knew other business owners, had, them in, had business owners in my family, um, didn't really at the time have a lot of friends in own businesses, but I knew, you know, I was around those people, like nobody talked about that shit. Right. Like, I'm not going to be the guy to talk about it. Right. Like I'm not right. going to reveal the fact that, you know, I can't sleep at night or, you know, whatever it is that's going on. Mm -hmm. Have you been tested for sleep apnea? I mean, I can't sleep, but you know, I wake up in cold sweats in the middle of the night. It turns out I have sleep apnea. So, <laughs> oh, you know, it doesn't happen nearly as frequent as it used to. Um, you know, there's, there's still those moments that rock you a little bit and make you go like, whoa, okay, that got my attention. Um, but there's a, there's a, a stark difference between what my day-to-day -day looked like, my day-to-day -day life looked like and you know, year one, year two, year three was probably where the, the shifts started to occur and, and year four and five now. Um, the pandemic shook me a little bit, but um, I think it did all of us. But yeah, um, our, our business is a lot more established at this point. So those those things become less of a less of a big moment and more of a blip on the radar. Um, right. And I know one of the things you really want to talk about was just the people. Like you've said, you, you know, you kind of... Um, we're really reflecting on how you got here. And one of the things you realize is that it wasn't just you that got you here. Um, it, it, it's the people that have been around you, you know, starting with, with your employees, you know, I mean, what kind of impact of the people, you know, that you're working with and have been a part of it from year one that may not be there, but people that are there today, I mean, how have they carried you through all this? You know, the, I was thinking about that on a run this weekend. I felt like I was on the surface of the sun. So maybe my, my blood was boiling a little bit because it was so hot. Um, but I, when I had the conversation last week with my mentors about agreeing to pay off our debt early, um, I kept in my mind going, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe we're here. Like four years, four and a half years, whatever it's been um, in that, like, we're going to be done with this. Like early on, those payments were daunting. That, Like, I mean, it was it was tough. My, my wife saw things that probably no one else saw, um, that I was dealing with, but, um, you know, those, those payments slowly became, you know, just a part of a, a mundane part of life as the business grew and as our team grew. And, um, finally it hit me on that run was like, Oh, like, don't, don't be an ass. Like you didn't do this. Like you're, everybody did it. My wife did it. Our employees, my coworkers, our clients who trust us. Um, I could almost get like emotional thinking about it of the amount of people around us from Julia down the hall who I've sat next to for the last 11 years um, uh, and, and the newest hire, Amanda, who started a few months ago and, and everybody in between. I'm like, uh, that's again, why I'm so passionate about what we do. Like I, I've been the beneficiary of having the right people in the right places around me that uh, it, it, you can't articulate your appreciation or your thankfulness for it. Like, it's through everything. They're the ones that make things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, much, much more so than I do. Um, so it's, you, you just can't articulate that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to give yourself some credit there, my friend. They're, they're motivated and working and, and, and putting in that good work because they believe in their leaders. So, you know, I used to have this recurring dream that one day everybody came into my office and they're like, we figured this out. You don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> and I don't, I don't have that dream as often as I used to, but Man, those first few years, I, I dreamt about that a lot. I don't know that anybody wants to go through uh, the stress and sleeping in the middle of the night, like your sleepless nights, like you've gone through. What, you know, to kind of get personal, I mean, how, how did that impact your marriage? Like, as you guys were going through these times, you know, like with the stress, I mean, that's got to be a lot, you know, you probably a lot of stuff that you guys had to work through and and, you know, having the support of your wife, like you said, was, was key for getting through that. But any kind of stories that stick out or anything there? 
Yeah, we learned, I learned a lot about marriage in those first few years. I learned how to communicate with my wife effectively and, and how not to communicate effectively. Maybe, maybe that's what I did more. I learned how to not communicate effectively. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the stories that always sticks out that we laugh about um, is if I've been thinking about something for a long time, like it could be knocking around in my head for a real, real long time before it actually comes out of my mouth. And, and she knows that probably more so than I do about myself. But uh, I walked in one day, it was in uh, it had been probably like early 2019, um, and we had just come through, 18 was a pretty good year. Um, I mean, the oil thing busted, but the end of the year, like ended well. And um, I'll never forget walking into our kitchen, our old house. And she was like making mac and cheese for our, our son. And it's a Friday afternoon. Uh, I know like, hello, just I walk in. She's like, hey, hon. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to open a second company. And she like, didn't even look up. That was the idea to open the search business. She right. literally like didn't look up from like stirring the mac and cheese and she like finally, after like what seemed like 10 minutes, like turned her head and looked at me and she's like, that's just not really how you lead into a conversation like that. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> duly noted. Like, you know, uh, you've been in this for two years, like, you know, our office flooded, the stress that came with that, you know, then oil sinking and the stress that came along with that, like, and then, you know, starting out on the third year, I'm like, hey, I have this big idea. It's going to unfortunately be pretty expensive. And um, but you know, I've been very fortunate. She's been very understanding. Um, she's always there as a soundboard and I talk to her about things and I'm sure she has zero interest in talking about or hearing about for me. Um, all, all she's ever asked for is that I'm there, like I'm, that I'm there for our boys. I'm there for right. our marriage. And, um, and I've always, uh, really tried to make a firm commitment, like man, five, five 30, I'm out of the office. I'm home with the family. Um, and, and really try to balance out that time. She's a time person and, and she's right to be that way. We've got young boys and, yeah. Um, that's the one asset or the one, the one resource that you, you just don't get back. So yep. um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real fortunate in that department. I married up yeah. big time. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can say the same for myself and it's, it's amazing when you have somebody that supports you on the journey, like, like you have, like I have, it's, you know, I think it's critically important. If not, then you've got things fighting against you. Oh, it would never work. Like it would, yeah. it would absolutely not work if you, if you don't have that. Right. Uh, e either the marriage would go south or it would end or or the business would. I mean, it would it would manifest itself in some way that would be positive. Um, I mean, that's when you talk about hiring or recruiting or having the right people around you. I mean, that's the most important decision uh, right. is, is having the right spouse or partner. I mean, that that comes way ahead of anything else. And if you get that right shit, the rest of I mean, the rest of it can fall into place. Right. Right. Yeah. It's uh, like our buddy Jeremy said, you know, it's the ability to recruit <laughs> his, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you caught that on the podcast a couple weeks ago, but I did. Yeah, that was pretty I good. Did. That was pretty good. Um, if you get that one right, then you can probably recruit anybody. So um, yes. awesome, man. I mean, outside of, you know, people, you know, we talked about your wife, we talked about some of, you know, obviously the employees and things about that, but like, what about like from a professional network? I know you're a part of, um, you know, a couple of different networks, but like, who have you been able to lean on professionally to help, you know, elevate your game? I, um, gosh, probably like two, two and a half years ago, got invited to a group in Houston by a, the CEO and founder of a client of ours called the Dover group. And it, it's, uh, it, it's all, um, small business owners. We're all, we all kind of come from different paths, um, or, or different, uh, industries. Some of us, although are in kind of similar businesses, um, and when he invited me to it, he said, Hey, I wish, you know, somebody when I was your age and at, at your, you know, um, stage in the journey, I wish I'd have been invited to something like this to have, you know, other, other business owners, and entrepreneurs around you. Um, and that's been, that's been a big deal. Um, if, in a couple of ways, like one, just to have those people to talk to in a room that, you know, what you say is confidential right. um, and that you're not going to be judged for, but then also in a business sense, a lot of them, um, have, have uh, used our business on both sides and, and we're fortunate for that. Um, and then uh, in January of this year, because of Jeremy and your friend, Brent, I had seen some information from both of them about entrepreneurs organization. Uh, and I joined that. Um, and that's uh, as well. Anyone that's eligible to join that, that doesn't join it is, uh, is crazy. In my opinion, it's an amazing um, organization and, and the effort that they put into creating an environment that helps uh, helps you grow and fosters uh, growth. Um, and then 
the group, I don't, I don't think you market it a lot as a part of your business, but the groups that you put people into, I've still got relationships from the group that you put me into in April. Um, we've, there's been um, some business relationships that have come out of that. Um, and just, just to have a friend in the industry that you can talk to again, that, you know, is confidential. I, I had right. done a post, I think like last week or something on Facebook or, or, or LinkedIn rather, just talking about the value that comes from having relationships in your industry. Like you're better at serving your customers. You're better at serving your employees. You're, you're better at all of it. If you've got relationships in your industry and you've got friends in your industry, even if they're competitors on paper, like to, to have those relationships and to have those people a phone call away, uh, that's, that's a big deal, man. I, I think that's something that's really underestimated. Um, especially early in people's career. I know what I was like real early on. Uh, man, if you were waving the flag of a competitor, like I won't say it because people are probably listening and I don't want to use that kind of language, but yeah. dude, you were an enemy. Like you were the competitor, right? Like right. I, I had no, uh, and I think a lot of people feel that way still. Like, it, it, and that's, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal to have yeah. those people. Well, you know, I mean, you connected me with, with Jeremy, who's technically a competitor, right? Um, you know, of yours. Yeah, we're in the same industry and in the same town. Yeah. Same industry, same town. Yet there's enough to, to go around and you guys sat around talking nothing but high praises for each other. So, you know, I think you bring up good points there. It's, you know, there's so much to go around. If you have an abundant mindset, you realize that there's there's just enough, you know, and most people yes. or people that you want to interact with are going to are going to share quality things. You know, that I agree. Yeah. You know. And if they're not and they, they, they turn it off or they're, they're not willing to engage with you, it says more about, I think, that individual than it does yourself. Right. Um, it, yeah, it's, I'd, rather, I'd rather be around people that have that mindset than don't. I mean, right. um, you nailed it on the head, the abundant mindset versus scarcity. It's, uh, it's a stark difference. Right, right. Yeah, love it, man. And thank you for being so honest and, and kind of sharing these, these journeys and things. Is there anything that we didn't catch yet that you, you want to you point out or share? You know, what you and I are talking about, what we're getting ready to do here another week or so, yep. right? We're, we're getting ready to, uh, to engage in a, a podcast that we're going to launch. And yep. I'm doing that kind of separate from my two businesses, but um, doing it to, I mean, we're going to talk to a lot of the people that I work with, but uh, there's a lot of people on that list that we're not, uh, we don't work with. So it's not like it's some tool to try to, you know, sell people something. Um, I'm really passionate about entrepreneurship and really passionate about, uh, those types of relationships, working with those types of people, having conversations, learning about their stories. Uh, I think in everybody's story, uh, we take for granted all the value that someone else might get out of it, whether it's one right. little snippet, I mean, that you take away and it gives you an idea or, or it, it uh, spins up a thought in your mind of something that you can go do that might impact your life, whether it's your personal life or your, your business life. And so we're going to start talking to a lot of these entrepreneurs and people who have founded some of these companies that we work with and that are in our industry and in our space. And, and I'm excited to be the person that gets to share their story a little bit or shine a light on their story. Um, and really it, it, it's kind of a selfish thing. Like there's people I want to talk to, right? Like, I just want to, like, I'm interested in their stories. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to kind of nerd out on that. Like talk to all these guys and girls and uh, like get the, the, all the down and dirty of like how they got to where they are today. Um, so I'm, I'm real excited about that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That year. The um, the I think that's one of the things that's really exciting about what what I get to do is interviewing folks like yourself and and interviewing other experts in the industry and you know just being able to hear other people's stories is it's fun. Like I really enjoy hanging out these podcasts and picking people's brains and and hearing the good, bad, and the ugly. It's it's a lot of fun. So I'm excited for you in that journey. I think you're gonna do well at it, and I think you're gonna you know it's gonna benefit you in multiple you know multiple areas. I was actually just checking here. I wanted to see, because I think we're actually, I'm going to look at this real quick. I think we're actually almost a year to the day, pretty close to the last time I interviewed you. Um, oh, no kidding. Yeah. I'm going to check this out here. Gosh, that's crazy. That does not yeah, seem no. like, it yeah. seems like 10 years ago, but at the same time, it seems like it was a month back. Yeah. COVID does weird things to you. It does. It does. I'm, of course, now that I'm looking for it, I can't find it, but hopefully I'll get it here sooner than later. Um, but yeah, I was really just kind of thinking about what that timeline was. And of course, I don't see it now that I'm searching for it. Um, but, you know, now that, you know, we, you've been through my program, 
it's a year later. I mean, I would be curious as to see like what what from going through the program working with me, like what is what have been the results? What are you know, what's still working, what's not type of a thing? Well, we're, we're using all the same tools. We're just using them for something different, right? Like we right. initially engaged um, because the way our business development was set up when everybody went home, there was a real problem um, from a sales standpoint. And so that's, I mean, that fixed that problem. Um, and it, it fixed that problem pretty quickly. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, I guess it was about the turn of the year, probably where the, the opposite problem took place. You know, we right. went from you know, a, a very employer driven market where, you know, we were having to do a lot of business development to a market where it was very candidate centric um, and you flip the script. And so the same tools or processes, like I never, never thought about it back then because back then it wasn't hard to find candidates. Right. Um, but now, yeah, I, can't, I mean, if you're a recruiter in this industry right now and you're not busy, there's a real problem. I mean, it's real easy to get job uh, orders. Uh, it's the opposite. It's, it's they, right. it can be very difficult depending on the segment that they're in to fill them because I don't know the exact numbers for June, but I think in May there was like 9.2 million job openings, wow. um, which was very lopsided as you as you look at the unemployment numbers and, and um, the workforce participation rate. So it's, um, yeah, it's just, we, we still use all of them. It's just, they're the opposite. They're, they're approaching the opposite audience. So I guess that's the biggest difference. Our audience has changed of who, who we're trying to engage with more versus, you know, back then it was, it was much more business development. Right. One of the things we work on is obviously the personal branding side of things. I mean, how do you feel like your personal brand is elevated in the last, you know, 12 months? Wow, man, I might've took a hit today, you know, admitting that I was a million dollars in debt, but <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it, it's, it didn't exist. Like when we met, like there wasn't a personal brand. I was not active on social media. I was not active on uh, LinkedIn. We, I mean, it wasn't a part of our process. So it's, it, it's hard to compare because you're talking about something that didn't exist for something today that, I mean, I don't know how many, um, you know, connections or followers or the exact numbers that we get, but we don't, we don't really do much business development anymore. It's we're primarily inbound now. And um, so I, I would imagine that has something to do with that. I've never, you know, I've done a bad job probably of asking people about that, but um, I'm certain that's the, you know, that that's what led to that. My, my right. phone wasn't ringing before we started working together, right? I'm, right. I was the one that was ringing the phones. Um, and so it's, it's, we still, I mean, it's still part of our life, right? Of we're, course, yeah. We're headhunters. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive difference. Yeah, that's good. That's great to hear. And I know one of the things that you've done well is you've taken some of the certain parts of the process of the system and you've deployed that through your entire team um, to, to execute. Yeah, on they're better at it than me. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're obviously now having conversations. I know you had one yesterday with Crystal and Paula. Yeah. Um, yeah it, it's, there's no reason why it has to be me. Right. Like right. Uh, we have people here who are all better at something than I'm, than I am. So, uh, we started to roll it out a while back and, um, that's been very successful and, and they've embraced it, which, and, and they probably embraced it more uh, than I did early on, because it's kind of terrifying. Like I, I'm yeah. not real active on social media. So to like start putting your, your stuff out there is, you know, there's some nerves associated with that. So I've, I've been fortunate that they, they obviously don't have that. Um, they, they took it and ran with it. So, um, that's, it's been a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty awesome how you have really empowered them to do that and how they've stepped, you know, from what I've seen on the outside, looking in, you know, how they've stepped into that. And, you know, it's a journey for all of them, just like it's been a journey for you. And, and, you know, I think that it, it, it takes a smart business owner to realize that, you know, empowering your employee to have their own personal brand is, is going to be good for all. It's going to be good for them. It's going to be good for you. Um, and I think the more that really grab onto that, the better, I think it creates a better work environment too. It allows them for more ownership and allows them to, to feel. A oh yeah. Them, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, especially in our industry. I mean, when it comes to recruiting, I mean, and I guess it's like that with everything. I just, I naturally think it's different, of course, because it's our industry, but right. um, it, it's not unique, I guess, to most things. Like people want to buy from people they know. Yeah. You know, they don't, I, I don't know that, you know, brands, big company brands go nearly as far in our industry than um, personal brands do. I mean, especially right. when you're talking about a candidate who wants to make a, a career change. You know, I mean, we talk to people who haven't talked to their spouses yet about a career change sometimes. 
you know, they, they want to talk and they want to deal with someone who they trust and who they know, and they feel like they have a relationship with. And uh, the more you, you get your personal brand out there, the better off you are at getting the right engagement from those types of people. Yeah. Um, you know, that I, I think that, and maybe, maybe I, maybe I am right. I don't know, but I think in our industry, there's, there's definitely something to that. Um, I think personal branding is as much, if not more important um, than the company brand itself. Got it. Got it. And I'm just curious, I mean, have you, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the actual employees? I mean, that's not the traditional desk model, you know, what I teach, um, it, you know, how do they enjoy going through the process? Well, they, they're more consistent. They do a better job than I do. So I would imagine they're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, 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 uh, you know, I think early on last year when we were doing it, there was maybe a little bit of hesitation because it was a brand new thing to us and it was brand new to me. I probably didn't do a great job of conveying a lot of the information. Um, it, but since then, I mean, it's, uh, it's just become a part of what we do and who we are and, it seems that everyone enjoys it. I don't think they would be doing it if they didn't. I don't think anybody is around here is, uh, you know, shy that would not, you know, come over here and be like, Hey, I'm not doing this shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm, they, they embraced it. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, kudos to you to, you know, for implementing all that stuff, you know, seeing the results of that. Now we're on to the podcast is our next big, big play and big move. So make sure you guys uh, head over to LinkedIn, follow Ben Bonnell as he's going to roll out his podcast in the next uh, week or so, we'll be doing some recording and yes. we'll have that thing live here soon. Um, but I think it's great that you're stepping into that. And, and one thing I applaud you for, man, is you're always looking to grow. I think that's, I think that's really, really awesome. I mean, do you want to speak a little bit about how much you've kind of invested in the personal development and growth and the groups and stuff and how you feel like that's impacted you? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's tens of thousands of dollars a year. Um, yeah. I don't know the, exact number i probably should my my sarah my cpa is probably like one over i don't know that figure but um i spend a lot of money on it and and really it started when you and i's relationship and our friendship started where i it's like oh whoa there's there's a lot of value here um and so i embraced it and i i chased that down um pretty fast and engaged uh, with with uh, a couple different organizations and yourself obviously and um i i think it, a lot of people are probably slow to, to get to it, but I think anyone that gets to it, if you see the value fast, I mean, you and I've talked about this a million times, it, uh, it, it pays for itself. Right. Um, it's, uh, it, it's been a real game changer for me in the last, you know, whatever it's been 18 months. Um, so I, I, I thought about it too. This is probably a little aside, maybe this is a little bit too much information, but, um, I used to wonder about, I'm like, why am I never content? Like, why am I always trying for something more or like something bit like you set a goal at some point you achieve it and it's like, okay, that we're done with that. Now what? Until finally, I kind of realized like, it's not about the next goal. It's like, I, I'm content when there's a challenge. And right. if you're committed to growth, like there is no bigger challenge. We're human beings. We're, we're flawed, all of us. So yep. if, if you're committed to, to discipline and, and growth, like, I mean, that there's just, there's no greater challenge. I mean, there's, there's no, um, there's no end, right? Like you're right. just, you're constantly striving to be better. Yeah. Um, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's as a father, whether it's as a business owner, as a coworker, yeah. um, whatever it may be. Um, it's, it's just a constant challenge. Yeah. I love that. I like to call it just kind of being in the process, right? Um, I think we're all in the process, no matter marriage, business growth. And, and sometimes you can sit on the sidelines um, and watch, or you can hop into the process and and grow and, and face some things head on and things like that. And I think that's where, you know, anytime you have that adversity, you know, last year, for example, in the pandemic, you know, some people packed it in and that's no knock. It's just how people reacted. And some people, you know, stepped in and, and that's, you know, there's a difference of probably where they're at right now, you know, and I, I just always like to encourage people that, you know, with help, with growth, with a coach, with whatever it is, a mentor, having to design it, but stepping out of, outside of your comfort zone, there's just a whole different life out there. Mm. They didn't even know existed, you know, like you're saying, here you are, you're taking on a, a massive loan and here you are four years later and you're paying it off early. It's like, what, you know, like that's because of everything you stepped into the growth that you, you know, invested into and the belief and that constant pursuit of, of better, you know, um, at least that's what I, I read this like big quote every day that's in my home office and is in my, my home gym um, by, and I can't say the whole thing. It's long, but it's the one by Teddy Roosevelt. That's the, the man in the arena. 
Yeah. Um, like if you're not in the arena, like your feedback's not welcome, your criticism's not welcome. And um, if you find other people that are, you know, quote unquote in the arena, right. man, the, the iron sharpen, sharpens iron. Um, yeah. it, it's, uh, the sky's the limit. Yeah, it's a great game. Love it, man. So outside of the podcast, I mean, what are you most fired up about next on your journey? You know, it's almost August and it's really hot in August. And then come September, I'm like excited about being outside again. It's really hot. And I told you, man, I went on that run. Like, I think my blood was boiling. Um, So I'm excited for the end of summer and to get into better weather where we can start doing a lot more stuff outside. We kind of, we didn't get robbed of a year with COVID, but we, to a degree we did. We, we didn't get to see our family nearly as much. My wife and I aren't from Texas and we live in Houston now. So um, our families are all, uh, their flights away. It's not a car ride. So um, we've spent a lot of time with family uh, recently and, and out of town friends. And we're looking forward to continuing that. And it, it wouldn't be possible if we didn't have a business that was growing. I didn't have employees that could make shit happen without me. So right. I, I'm excited that we reached this destination, which is just one destination on a long journey. And I realized right. that, but it's exciting to be at the one that we're at now. And, and like you and I have talked about too, like sometimes you do have to kind of step back and recognize that. Um, and and um, I am very proud and feel very fortunate and grateful that we've got to the point that we're at right now and that, that I'm able to not have to work crazy long hours, you know, six, seven days a week and that you know, I, I can step back and enjoy time with family and friends and, and make up for a little bit of lost time, you know? Yep. So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to this fall. That's awesome, man. And you deserve all that. So definitely, definitely soak all that in. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully the Houston yes. Texans, are you a Texans fan? Or are you, you're probably a Browns fan. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately uh, we're doing good now though. I mean, last year was uh, the best year in my, my, uh, my fa- year, my, my uh, tenure as a fan. So yes, I'm a Browns fan. I root for the Texans just because my kids are growing up here. I'm sure they're going to want to root for their hometown team with their friends and stuff. So yeah. it's not looking good for them though, man. They got, they got some stuff going on. Yeah, they do. Uh, so we'll, we'll stick with the Browns for now. Right on, man. Well, thanks again for, for hanging with me, Ben. Um, if you could leave the audience with one final piece of advice, what would that be? Wake up earlier. Wake up earlier. There you wake go. up earlier. If you can't get it done, wake up earlier. All right. That's when, when the morning, when the day, right? I'm one of those weirdos that gets up at like four or four thirty every day. Changed my <laughs> life when I started doing it, man. Yeah. Wake up earlier. I'm not as weird as you. I'm more of like a five five thirty guy, but four four thirty. That's that's different. That is unique. Yeah, that's, that's yourself, how I, I gotta, I gotta go earlier now, huh? <laughs> What's that? I've got to go earlier now, then, huh? <laughs> yeah. Get up earlier. All right. Cool. Well, right on, dude. Thank you so much for hanging with me um, on the, another episode of the Relevant Recruiter Show. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate our friendship, our, our journey together, and, and honored to uh, to be a part of it. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Love doing this. Looking yep. forward to doing it more on mine. Right on. Yeah, we'll be we'll be talking next week. Relevant Recruiter Group. We will see you next week. Everyone have a great weekend.